Windows Forms developers rejoice. There are a million and one changes coming to Windows Forms on .NET Core, some of them already there. It's improvements to performance and accessibility and even brand new controls. You'll want to check this out on on.net. Hello and welcome to another episode of on.net. Today I have some members of the Windows Forms team who have been working on some incredible improvements that they would like to share with you. I've got Mary and Igor with me. Mary, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? Hi, I'm Mary McGaw. I'm the lead for the WinForms team. So I help manage the, the features that we do and um, help kind of keep the work going. But I've been the dev lead for WinForms for several years now as we've gone um, open source and been making those changes. Lots of incredible changes that we'll get to in a minute. Let's mm -hmm. uh, say hello to Igor. Hi, um, my name's Igor. I'm a, an engineer on, on the team, and I look after the uh, Windows Forms runtime. So Windows Forms is a technology that has been around for quite some time, right? I can tra trace it back to the early days of my career, but it's not, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, what we would consider a legacy technology, right? It's alive and well in .NET Core and lots of improvements coming to it. Absolutely. We've been spending quite a bit of time making WinForms open source and then working with the community to create awesome new features and fixing of old issues and, and doing some of the stuff that Igor and I are going to talk about throughout today. So it sounds like for those of you listening to this who are Windows Forms developers on .NET Framework, what are some of the compelling reasons to move to .NET Core? I can take that. Um, the, the big reasons to move to .NET Core are some of the improvements. I mean, just the fact that we're making improvements because .NET Framework has kind of reached a, a completion level and there's still stuff people want. And so if you want the improved performance, improved security, improved accessibility, you're going to find that in .NET 5 and beyond. So tell us uh, about the performance improvements that are, are coming to Windows Forms. All right, that's, I suppose I'll, I'll be talking about this. So um, to start with, I'll just run a little application, uh, which we have to just showcase the point. I have three little applications here, um, which is exactly the same source code, but I'm just running it against three different frameworks. One is uh, against uh, .NET Framework 4.8. One is against .NET Core 3.1. And the other one is .NET 5. Yeah. So these little apps will help us see the difference in performance improvements we've had uh, between .NET Framework and .NET Core and uh, with .NET 5. So as we were open sourcing the dot Windows Forms uh, and moving to .NET Core, we didn't have much time and opportunity to, to make any significant changes and improvements. And majority of the changes you see in WinForms on .NET Core is uh, predominantly due to the changes and optimizations in, in .NET Runtime. So let's say I run um, a, a data grid application which we just doing a refreshes and redraws nothing else and you see i've done a 50 redraws of that form and each redraw took almost um 100 182 kilobytes of memory for each redraw if i run the same application on dotnet core and do the same uh, 40 iterations you'll see that the memory of 50 iterations, you see that it's, it's slightly more uh, optimal. So we using only 173 kilobytes of memory per redraw. And, and that's primarily due to the changes in the runtime. It, it made a few uh, optimization there. But if we run the same sample on .NET 5, you will see that um, we significantly more uh, optimal. We only 
wow. consuming 50, 57 kilobytes of memory per read row. So that's almost like three times. That um, was inside a Commodore 64. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's, yeah, yeah, it would. Um, so let's, let's run another example where we have a form uh, which has quite a few controls, maybe not as many controls as a typical line of business application will see, but still quite a few controls. And you see that we've done 400 iterations and we consume 100 kilobytes of memory to redraw on .NET Framework. If we run the same on .NET Core, you can maybe see the flickering. That's why we you know, doing the redraws and all the heavy lifting. And we're doing about you know, 22% sort of better like at 78 kilobytes. And if we run the same on .NET uh, 5, let's see what we get. We're only doing 18 kilobytes. Mm -hmm. So like you may you may ask like, well, how could we get you know, such a dramatic improvement? Um, so Windows Forms is, is a managed wrapper over Windows 32 um, and, and Windows API uh, primarily. And we have a lot of interop um, calls and uh, interop uh, operations. And one of the things we've been doing uh, since .NET Core days is optimizing our interops. Uh, we made them sort of bleedable, so we, we don't create un unnecessary allocate memory. We don't unnecessary marshal uh, objects back and forth between native and uh, unmanaged memory. And by doing that, we, like some of these improvements in .NET Core like are due to the the work we've done obviously that's a small nuance work but it still counts in dotnet 5 we were able to take it further and most of the windows forms drawing operations based on gdi plus um, which is easy to deal with than the original gdi um, engine but gdi plus is slower and like part of the optimizations we've done in dotnet 5 we basically looked at the drawing code and looked where we could use GDI as opposed to GDI plus. And by doing so, we were able to achieve these significant improvements. Um, we also have optimized the text renderer um, API, which I use to just draw text. So like here, we just have a, an empty form and we're just drawing text with 10,000 iterations. And it takes about you know, three kilobytes per iteration. In .NET 5, we optimized this uh, to use the GDI as well as we optimized uh, our API to use uh, new features from uh, .NET 5, uh, such as spans. So, so by using spans, you can see it's actually much faster. Mm -hmm. Now we're consuming only 0.3 kilobytes of memory. So our users by, the, by uh, choosing to use the new text render APIs in the applications in .NET 5, they can achieve significant improvements. Um, and like I, I've run that sort of the sample previously, you can see like the figures, you can see that we have a significant improvement across the board uh, between .NET framework um, to all the way to .NET 5. So that's uh, amazing. And most of these changes you get just by migrating, right? I know some Absolutely. of them have to opt into to new controls, but most of them are the framework itself, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, so like ultimately you can migrate your application and you should see significant improvements in terms of less memory consumed. Less memory meaning less uh, garbage collection um, operation happening, meaning your application is faster and snappier. And then you can look at optimizing, say, text rendering operations if you do them, and you can get feel the uh, performance improvements. Nice. Um, so performance uh, performance optimization is not the only thing we've done in .NET 5, obviously. Uh, we've done some accessibility uh, improvements, and Mary will talk about this. Um, the industry we're learning it is really starting to focus on accessibility, and we've been trying to get desktop applications to start adhering to some standards, some international standards when it comes to making sure that applications can work with accessible technologies, such as narrator, magnifier, and millions of other possibilities. 
So in .NET 5, one of the big changes that we did was we started adding more UIA patterns. So basically, WinForms, as we all know, started quite a while ago, 20 some odd years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was built on the accessible technologies that were available 20 some odd years ago. And we hadn't done much to try to improve it. Windows has some ways of, of trying to make the best out of these two incompatible systems. But what we have been doing is making all of our controls more compatible with the modern technologies. And one example, which we can show on the video, of something that you cannot get in .NET Framework, but you will be able to get in .NET 5 is as simple as narrator being able to go letter by letter by letter. Before in .NET Framework, you would literally Edit. see Tech. that and only that. And you, you might've heard text box one starting in the background. Now we get quite a few new capabilities. Text box, end of line. Space, A, D. So you D, can add text, I, and every D, individual I, letter L, is read N, out via A, narrator. L, space, T, E, X, T. Another cool thing that narrator or that we're allowed to do now is select I, text D, D, with with A, narrator or with accessible edit, technologies. Domain up down, end of line. Which M, I don't think we need to w, see all o, of these. But what we're doing is we're allowing um, developers to create applications in the enterprise that uh, are working for their individuals or their employees that have various disabilities and need to use various accessible technologies. In .NET 6, we're going to go even further. We're going to make sure that every required UIA pattern is supported on every control and really enable WinForms apps to be used by anybody who needs to use assistive technology and manipulate the content. So do I have to do something special to make these accessibility options available once I migrate my application or are these again out of the box changes? These will be out of the box changes in .NET 5. So you're able to Literally, if you deploy the .NET 5 application, the narrator users in your organization or JAWS or NVDA, they'll be able to take advantage and leverage these new benefits. Again, no additional work. And it helps organizations, especially some um, government groups and that sort of thing, adhere to local disability laws which to me is super important to make apps available to everybody. And then from a legal perspective, it's always good for companies to be able to ensure the accessibility of their apps. So we've touched on performance. We've touched on accessibility and pretty much changes out of the box. Are there mm -hmm. any other highlights that we'd like to, to jump into? Oh, yeah. Igor's got a good example for you. We are actually adding new things in .NET 5, the first new actual controls and features in .NET 5 have been added in .NET 5 from you know, 2005. Now we're actually adding new controls. So Igor's got an awesome demo for that. Very cool. Let's check it out. All right, we have a running. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna show you um, task dialogue, um, which, uh, all time Windows users may, may certainly be familiar with, but it's something we've missed uh, in Windows Forms. Um, uh, just worth noting that Visual Basic is fully supported in .NET 5 as well. So I'll be running actually .NET, oh, sorry, Visual Basic uh, .NET sample, showing you visual, um, the task dialog, the new cool feature. Um, so traditionally, like, what what you had in in uh, Windows Forms it was just a message box where you could have <clears throat> a heading, um, some text, and some buttons. Pretty pretty boring stuff. But this is a, a task dialog. So what task dialog gives you is way now you can have um, like a text which sort of stands out, and like you can have uh, uh, you can draw more attention of the user. To, to your question and I have additional text. 
and it, it it also gives you additional cool features such as like you know having a checkbox mm -hmm. um, so that that's cool thing um, again in in the original message box you couldn't have you only had the predefined button so you couldn't have your custom buttons does dialog allows you to have your custom buttons so you can have custom text if you desire um, it also has sort of a different presentation for buttons. These are called command links. So you can have, you know, a, a, a cool design like this in, in your as your sort of message box. You can also have it, you know, to have cool functionality and have it auto close and, and have the progress bar of that kind of cool nature. You also can build, you know, multi-page um, dialogues. Um, again, a word of caution, like, Task Dialog is not meant to uh, replace like wizard-based applications. It's still uh, a message box. It's just a quick interaction with the user, like to get a confirmation and such. But sometimes you may want to have it. It allows you to have multi-page interactions. So you see that, for instance, the button is disabled, right? And it can be controlled from your checkbox, right? You can have sort of collapsible. Uh, portions of you know your task dialog where you can have progress bars you can have additional interactive elements in it and certainly you can have presentation like that um, you can also have uh, two things such as you know ui prompts and stuff so all of that can be done with the task dialog which can allow you to make a, a sort of rich interaction uh, with the user, and certainly something uh, users are used to in in Windows. Um, so that's Task Dialog. We also had cool things we've done in um, List View. So again, traditionally, like everyone is familiar with List View, you, you see it everywhere um, in Windows Explorer, um, for instance. And List View has received a, a lot of uplift in Vista, Vista timeframe. But in .NET Framework, in Windows Forms um, toolbox, we couldn't take these changes. Until now, in .NET 5, we made um, our List View is like to have all the you know, bells and whistles the uh, Windows list, uh, list view has. For instance, now it's easy to make it collapsible. Uh, previously, you would have to jump through hoops and uh, write your own uh, interop code to, to do that. Now these features you know, come out of the box with uh, .NET 5. Uh, we added uh, the sort of icons for each header. Again, something you can have. You can have subtitles for your headers. And you can have your folders, um, so you can see like, and the folder can be you know left, center, or you know right aligned if if, if that's necessary. And we added the uh, task links, things like that. So and then again, you can have your events applied to them. So that's probably it. Um, very good. So it looks like we've got a ton of changes to take advantage of. If I was a WinForms developer, I haven't written WinForms code in several years now, but I would definitely want to be migrating over to uh, .NET Core and take advantage of those new features. Thank you for joining us and for the awesome demos and information. And uh, we look forward to seeing what people will build with Windows Forms on .NET Core. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. Thank you.